How much has changed for you just going through the mocks, going through talking to people? Combine week is here, and so some people are going to work out, some people aren't. How much has changed for you just in the last week on this stuff? Yeah, guys, thanks for having me on again. And yeah, I actually just got to uh, Indianapolis yesterday. We're actually in the convention center right now, uh, about to hear some head coaches and GMs speak. But yeah, I don't think much has changed for me, honestly, uh, in terms of how I feel about this process. We'll see how they work out, obviously, too. But you don't want to overreact uh, to any of the you know quote unquote underwear Olympics that are going on. But at the same time, it's a very important event at the same time. So uh, I'm really excited to see you know what these processes can do, the ones that are working out. Uh, so yeah, it should be a fun week. What's the position for you you're kind of circling going into the combine? I know a lot of the talk is quarterback, but what's another position for you you're circling of interest for this week? Yeah, I think the corner class is really interesting. Uh, I, I think depending on who you ask, there's going to be a different top corner for everyone. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing those guys work out. I think one of the top guys, Cooper DeGene, will not be working out because he's still recovering from his broken fibula. But uh, everyone else should be working out. Quinion Mitchell, uh, Nate Wiggins, guys like Terry and Arnold, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, we've seen a lot of different CB1s for a lot of different people. Uh, so I'm excited to see if one of them can kind of emerge in this, what right now is a wide open class. Well, you mentioned Cooper DeGene right there, and obviously he's still coming back from his injury. So what are some things that he can do or that other corners can do that are working out that would allow them to jump him or allow him to show NFL scouts, GMs, executives that he should be the number one quarterback coming off the board when he can't show any of his physical abilities? Yeah, so I think, you know, obviously he's a great athlete. But I, one thing that I love about him, I actually was fortunate enough to interview him before the season, uh, and he was a terrific kid uh, interviewing-wise. And I think that's kind of an underrated part about the combine that people tend to forget is that these guys are meeting with NFL teams and they are trying to make a first impression. Um, and as you guys know, as everyone knows, honestly, you know, making a first impression at job interviews is critical. So uh, I, I think he could really shine in those interviews. But otherwise, you know, the other top corners like Nate Wiggins, uh, you know, Quinion Mitchell, those are guys who are really, really good athletes. I think they could shine uh, in the testing portion of this too. So – uh, interviews are critical, but the guys who are working out too can show like, hey, I'm a step above the others in terms of athleticism. I think that could really, you know, help set them apart. Max Chadwick, our guest here, PFF.com. He's got the latest mock draft at PFF.com. Find it. Find him on Twitter. He is at the combine now, joining us live from Indianapolis. Uh, it's become quite the chatter. Marvin Harrison Jr. is not going to do anything. He said, pro day at Ohio mm-hmm. State, no thanks. Combine, no thanks. I am who I am. You know my name. You know my tape. Malik Neighbors also not participating in much combine stuff. I saw Roma Dunes. They said he's trying to he's trying to run sub four four, so he's going to do some stuff at the combine. How do you break this stuff down for yourself, Max? Like, how do you Neighbors, Odunze, Harrison Jr. How do you power rank those three guys for yourself? Yeah, I, for me it's pretty clear, um, and I know it's not for a lot of people, and I can understand that. But for me, it's pretty clearly. Marvin's number one, uh, Neighbors is number two, and Rome is number three. Now, I would still take all three of them in the top ten, and I think you can make an argument for Marvin and, and uh, Neighbors to go in the top five. But uh, I still think Marvin Harrison Jr. is a step above the other two right now uh, as a prospect, and I think Malik Neighbors is – you know he was the best receiver in college football this past year, honestly. So uh, I, I think he's the number two for me, and I would probably put Roman Dunes at number three. But like I said, I, I think all are worthy of being top ten picks, and I think all three of them – are probably going to be future wide receiver ones in the NFL. Uh, how would you gauge Troy Franklin? I know he's not in this conversation with those three. They seem to have set themselves apart, and we'll see what that order is going to be come draft day. How, how do you view Troy Franklin, the wide receiver from Oregon? Some mocks I have him late first. Some will have him you know, early to mid-second. How do you view Troy Franklin as a prospect? Yeah, like I said, I think it's a pretty clear top three receivers, but I think after that it gets a little bit more open. I think he's kind of competing with a guy like Brian Thomas Jr., the other LSU receiver. He's probably competing with him for that wide receiver four slot right now. So I like Troy Franklin. He's a bigger receiver at six foot three. Got to put on some weight, though. I believe he's only around 185 to 190 pounds. Uh, but he's a really good athlete. So I, he actually, I think, will, will test really well at this combine, uh, depending on how much he actually does. But, yeah, I like Troy Franklin a lot, and I think you know he should be picked – somewhere in the top 25 to 30, in my opinion. Max, you have Michael Penix in your latest mock draft over at PFF. Uh, You have him going number eight to the Atlanta Falcons. It seems like Penix has a real volatile uh, 
where he'll be drafted. When you look at all the different experts, some people have him high like you do. Some people have him in the second round. Some people have him even further down than that. What are some things that Penix can do this weekend that's going to help vault him up as high as you have him? And why do you think he's going to be taken so high? So I actually, funny enough, that actually mock draft uh, is me and my co-host on my show, Dalton, and we actually split up the picks. Mm. Uh, he loves Michael Penix Jr., so he actually was the one that picked Penix there. I probably wouldn't go that high for him, but, you know, Dalton loves I mean, he obviously was one of the best quarterbacks in college football this past year. This is a huge week for him, a huge, huge week. Uh, he is th- he's one of the few quarterbacks that actually is throwing at the combine, so that's great for him. And the other thing is uh, medicals are a huge, huge thing at the combine. And obviously, Michael Penix Jr. has had his fair share of injuries uh, in his career already. So, um, obviously, you know, a couple of torn ACLs. I think he's had four season-ending injuries total in his career. Um, medicals are going to be massive for Michael Penix Jr. And obviously, the throwing portion, too, will be good for NFL teams to see, you know, how he does in that setting as well. But uh, I, I really think that the medicals are, are really key for Michael Penix Jr. If it checks out for him, maybe he will re-enter the first-round conversation. But if they don't check out, uh, we could see him maybe slip to the, the second or third round, honestly. Who do you think is going to win the number two battle? We we all assume Caleb's going one. I think that noise is pretty loud at this point, that that's a done deal. Who do you think gets number two, Jaden or Drake May? I personally, I, I think it should be Drake May. I, I also see the quarterback class, like the receiver class, like there's a pretty clear one, two, three. Uh, but there is a lot of smoke that Jaden Daniels could go number two overall. Dalton actually even took Jaden Daniels number two overall in that mock draft. So, um, I, it's definitely a close race, but in my opinion, I, I think Drake should be the guy that the commanders go with at number two. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested to see whether or not they actually will do that. Uh, how many times have you gone to the combine before this year, Max? Yes, I went last year. Yeah. What is what do you enjoy about it? I, I'm sure it's pretty exhausting. It's an all day thing. You're you're interviewing some of these players as they're going through their workouts or just hanging around to talk. What what's your favorite part of the combine? I think it's just cool to rub elbows with a, a bunch of people that, you know, you look, uh, admire, honestly, in this industry, not only in the media industry, but I mean, it's funny enough, like you're out at the bars at night and you see like some NFL head coaches at the bars too. And it's just like, wow, this is like, this is pretty sick. So that, that's definitely the coolest part of it is, uh, you know, all these people that you follow on Twitter and admire their work and you actually get to meet them in person. I think that's kind of the, the coolest part of the whole experience. Max, we've had you on maybe four or five times, so I'll get you out of here with this one. And let's let's be honest. This is the trust tree, okay? We feel like we know each other pretty well. <laughs> who who do we want to rub elbows with the most? Who who mentally is Max Chadwick going, ah, I might actually sidle up next to who at this combine? Oh, good question. Um you know, if I could get next to Caleb Williams at any point during this whole week, I think that would be a, a success for me. But other than that, no, I, I think there's a lot of guys, uh, guys like Austin Gale at the ringer. I, I think does a terrific job. Ben Solak at the ringer does a terrific job as well. Um, I know both of them personally, thankfully. So, I, you know, I already have an established relationship with them, but they are two of the best in the business, in my opinion. So talking to them has always been uh, a wonderful experience. And, and seeing them here in Indianapolis is definitely really cool, too. I tend to agree with you. Could you tell Ben Solak to at least just text me back no on coming on the show? I think I've texted him 88 <laughs> times, and I never can get a response. But... I, I text him all the time just checking in to see how he's doing, and he rarely texts me back, too. So don't feel too bad. He's a, he's a pretty bad texter for everyone. That's okay. I listen to his show. He's like the oldest 20-something I've ever heard in my oh, life. Oh, he's like so... 26 years old. Yeah, he's like 26. Yeah, he's, he's killing it right now. So but old. yeah, he's... He's, he's unbelievable. Yeah, no, you are too, though, Max. Thanks for hopping on with us. The latest mock is a lot of fun. Enjoy Indianapolis, and we'll catch up with you soon. Of course, man. Appreciate you having me on. All right, there we go. Great stuff from Max Chadwick. PFF.com covers college football and the NFL draft. He is in Indianapolis, and uh, I've always wanted to go to this event. I know it's uh, Indianapolis isn't a destination city, but you always hear about what is the steakhouse? St. Elmo's? Is that say, the name of it? I think so, yeah. Everybody I goes to St. Elmo's. That. They drink scotch and they and have bourbon. The, and... the shrimp cocktail. Supposedly the cocktail sauce has more horseradish than anywhere else. Oh, you give it to me. Cleans out the system for you. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah.